How valuable are internships and assistantships for your career as a music composer? Let's talk about it. Happy Wednesday, everybody. It's raining, again. I think every Wednesday for like the last month, it's been raining, but you know what? We're still gonna do this, okay? So, I get this question quite a lot, actually, about what is the value of internships and assistantships as a music composer, and does it actually have an impact on your career? Now, the simple answer is maybe, kind of like financial questions. Uh, your career, your path, is going to be completely unique. There is no one path that's gonna work for you that is, is gonna work for everybody else, right? So my path is completely different, but I will still share it because I think there's some value there. But I think the number one question around this is, should this be something you actively seek out? Should you go out of your way to get an internship or an assistantship um, if you're in school or if you're trying to make it in the industry? And I think it just depends on your life situation. So I think in most cases, if you are younger, if you are in your early 20s, if you're not married, if you don't have kids, life is less complicated. So you are more in a situation where you can, uh, you can sacrifice more because you have more time to give, you have more energy to give, and you don't have as, as much expenses to pay to live. So especially in the United States, uh, it, it, the cost of living is pretty expensive. So, uh, especially if you're in a busier city like New York or LA, or even here in Atlanta, it can be a little expensive, um, especially if you're living downtown. So, seeking out an internship usually is not very well paid. You're doing it for the experience, you're doing it for the opportunity for potential outcome. So I think you always have to weigh it from that perspective. Okay, is this gonna actually make a difference in my career working with this person or this company. So I think that's the number one thing you have to consider when you're doing this. Um, so my story, uh, I actually got my master's at Columbia Chicago College. And at that school, the fifth semester of their master's program, you actually go out to Los Angeles and you have an assistantship. This is where you go for a summer, about six weeks, and you go and you work under another composer and you get to see their process, you get to, work alongside them and get to just see what they do in, in a real setting. And that was a really cool experience for me. Um, so I got teamed up with Joel Goodman, who was a TV composer out there, really great guy. And for me, I'll be honest that the TV industry is not something I'm as interested in. Um, so that was something, kind of a wake up call for me that, okay, maybe I don't wanna pursue this in particular, I'm more interested in the film and video game sides. Um, so while I was there, I actually went out of my way um, to contact Gary Scheiman. You may know him um, from Shadow of Mordor or from Bioshock. And he's done a lot of great games there, a lot of great orchestrations. I went out of my way to, to contact him, to meet up with him. And that was a really cool experience where, kind of an unofficial internship, if you will, but um, it just turned out that uh, I had contact chops. I could create sample instruments. I knew how to um, create instruments. I knew how to um, work with sample instruments. I think that that's, that was something that was really valuable for him. I was a younger guy who knew how to work with technology. Um, and he, he's a, a traditional composer who works with a piano. He works with orchestras, with, with live musicians. So I think it worked in his favor to have somebody um, who had that technological uh, savviness. And so that was a cool experience where me being, I guess, 24 at the time, 23, uh, I was a young guy that uh, I was just trying to get my, my feet wet into the industry. This was before I was married, so I had the time to invest in that. And that was a really cool experience. And from that experience, I, I got to learn some more of the ins and outs of the industry, particularly the game industry in this situation, and how to best help someone in that situation. So that was a really cool, valuable experience. And I wouldn't trade that for anything. Um, and that wasn't a paid opportunity. That was just my opportunity to help someone out 
um, and to learn learn some things about the industry. Um, but through that, that actually turned into a cool opportunity where um, I got to, to join him um, on some sessions. And so that was, that was a cool opportunity. And then fast forward, um, while I was out in Los Angeles, I also got uh, plugged in with Penko Kuneba, who is an orchestrator and a video game composer. You might know her from uh, Prince of Persia, uh, Sands of Time soundtrack, or um, Gears of War 3. So she's done a ton. And yes, it is getting very wet out here, but I don't even care. Um, and I got plugged in with her, got to actually start working with her um, as an assistant. Now, this turned into a remote gig because I was actually moving back to Georgia uh, to get married. And it, I actually ended up assisting her for about a year. And that was more on the, uh, the research side and the database collection side, um, which I think at that level, when you're, when you're at that Hollywood level, you need to have people alongside you who are doing kind of the grunt work, if you will, um, the less fun stuff, the non-musical side. So that was a cool experience and that was paid and that was something that, that was uh, a very helpful supplemental income for me while I was still trying to build my career early on. And I, it was cool that I could do that remotely. So that's one of the opportunities that most people are not aware of that you can actually help people remotely. You don't have to even be living in the same city because with the internet today, there's so much power of even something as simple as working in, in Excel spreadsheets and doing the research and, and contacting and emailing and doing that side of things, I think that's tremendously helpful. So in my experience, these are not traditional internships by any means. Um, they're technically assistantships, but in these opportunities really allowed me to uh, kind of get my foot in the door, make some great connections, make some great friends and get to experience the industry kind of from the inside out. And I think that's tremendously valuable. Um, and I would definitely recommend that for anyone who's in a position who can do that. Now, understandably, I'm now in a position with, you know, wife and kids and a family that I, I could never do an internship right now at this stage of my life. So um, I would recommend for anyone who can do it because it's tremendously helpful to be able to um, just to work with people of that caliber, of that talent level, and to be able to um, witness them in their studios, witness them with the orchestras, witness them um, wherever they go, you know? And, and I'm not saying you have to be in LA to do that, because you certainly don't. I just had the opportunity to. Um, so my best advice is if you're in the opportunity to do it and to help other people, it might even just be like a recording studio. It doesn't have to be an actual composer. There is such value in being able to be a fly on the wall, because ultimately when those people are looking for help, when they are looking, let's say that, you know, this is pretty common actually, let's say um, the composer you're helping or the studio you're helping, they have to write 20 tracks this week. That's an insane amount of music. And that's pretty common in the TV world in particular. Uh, let's say they need 20 tracks, but they're only physically able to do like 17 or 18 and they know that. And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna call their closest friends, the people that they trust, and they're going to dish out that extra work. They're going to pay you for it. They're going to divide whatever they get by, you know, 20, whatever, um, and kind of prorate it out that way. But what a cool opportunity to actually get your foot in the door. And I've seen this happen so many times with my friends, um, others who have been assisting other big composers and have continued assisting them. Eventually you just, you end up either getting to be an orchestrator or a music editor. And then eventually if you, you build that trust, you get to start writing music. Um, so I think it's a very powerful way to get your foot in the industry because it's like an artisan. You know, back in the old days of blacksmiths, you used to have a blacksmith who would train a pupil for five years, 10 years, and then pass on the craft until that student could either meet the master's level or surpass the master at which point they would start giving them work right and they become the new blacksmith and so in a very similar way we are in a craft where this music industry is very tightly knit most most composers know each other um they, you know we have each other's numbers and so it's um there's a reason why you should never burn bridges in the industry because that means that you kind of burning bridges with everybody that word gets around for sure. Uh, so definitely always be on, uh, 
always be generous and kind to people. Um, but your goal should be, if you're going to seek out an internship, do it in such a way that you can add value to the other composer and the, the, the team. So I recently uh, came across a Facebook post where a composer was asking, hey, what are some strategies for getting an internship or getting an assistantship? And my best advice was find the people who are nearest to you because those local connections are always the most powerful. Find where they are. You don't have to be in LA. There are composers basically all over the world. Um, find the ones that are closest to you. Contact them. See if they'll have coffee with you. See if they'll have lunch with you and, or meet up at their studio. And just, you might have to book it a month in advance. These, these people are busy. Um, but see if you can schedule a time to actually meet in person and then talk about their needs. Don't talk about your needs. It's not about you. Talk about what do they need the most help with. And then kind of subtly you start talking about, you know what, I have experience in that. Um, I, I would love to help you with that. Do you have any opportunities that I could help you? Or whatever, volunteer some ways that you could help them. Um, and you could say, if you're willing, you could say, uh, I won't charge for my time. I just want to be able to work with an industry professional. And so I think that that is uh, one of the best ways to get into that uh, and to start making those connections in a very powerful way. Now, of course, if you don't live near composers, if you don't live near people, probably the best way is just to connect with them online. Email is very powerful. Um, you don't want to do it in a spammy way, but you always want to do it in a way that adds value to those people. Because ultimately, if you're not adding value to them, they'll never want to work with you. That's, that's the whole purpose of hiring somebody, right? It's a very exciting world we live in today where through technology alone, we can connect with people and talk with people. And I've said this many times before, but uh, the majority of my collaborations with others, video game teams, film teams, most of them have been global. Most of them have been through the internet, uh, Skype chats, phone calls. It's actually pretty rare that I actually get to meet uh, these different people in person. It's kind of funny how we've come to that in technology today. So be motivated. I hope this this is uh, this gives you hope that there is tremendous opportunity for you if you're available. If you make yourself available, put yourself out there. And when you contact these people, don't blast them with like a 10 track SoundCloud playlist. Don't send them a thousand YouTube links. Don't attach 10 MP3s. Give them, basically give them what they ask for. Um, but if you're gonna share your music, send them like your best or 30 seconds of your best music, uh, your best clip from your film, whatever. Uh, because you don't want to spam them. You don't want to be an annoyance to them. You don't take up their time. So that's really the, the key factor here. Add value to them and they will want to help you in your career because most composers are really helpful people and they want to see you succeed and, and they want to help you get to where you want to be. So that's my best tip on that. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Every single Wednesday, we do music business videos, and I would love to have you join in every single week. And also, Mondays, we have studio composing. Fridays, we have VGM arrangements. See you next time, guys. Oh, holy moly. I did not know it was raining that hard. Oh well, we did it. <laughs>